Hi everyone, welcome back to Information Economics. Today we want to start a new topic, which is the signaling theory. Okay, so I will use one week to introduce the basic ideas. So in this video, I will give you the introduction, and in the next video, we will talk about the main mathematical tool we need for、uh, a signaling game, which is Bayesian updating. And for the last two videos, I will talk about one specific example about how to model、um, a signaling game and how to get the result. Okay, so there are different kinds of principal principal agent problems, and one of them is a screening problem. Okay, the other is that is more hazard problem. <coughs> In both two cases, the principal is of some informational disadvantage because the agent has some private information. For the screening problem, the agent has hidden information. For the moral hazard problem, the agent has hidden actions. Okay, these are the two types of problems we have studied. Starting from now, we will study another kind of problem. In the signaling problem, it is the principal that have private information. Okay, so the principal is going to know something that the agent does not know. So, <coughs> in the following、uh, weeks, when we talk about signaling games, the principal knows some private information, but the agent does not. Okay, the agent does not have a private information. We're going to see. What's going to happen when we have this kind of informational structure? Altogether, screening and signaling are both called adverse selection problems. Okay, so in the future, when someone talks to you about adverse selection, don't forget to first、uh, make sure that it is the principal or the agent that has private information. Okay, so. <coughs> Let's talk about the origin of signaling. Professor Akerlof from UC Berkeley, he once studied the market of used cars. Okay, used cars. You for used cars, we know it's typically the case that the owner, the seller of a used car, knows the quality of that car, and those potential buyers or consumers do not. Okay, you see a po- you see a used car posted on a website or somewhere. You see those basic attributes, but you don't really know how the previous owner treat treat the car and how that car is maintained. So the quality is a hidden in a piece of hidden information, which can be observed only by the principal. Okay, in this case, the principal is the seller. Because the principal is going to offer a price for that particular used car, so the issue here is that first, buyers do not want to buy lemons. Lemons is a word that is proposed by Akerlof to mention those cars that are actually bad. Okay, there are some cars, some used cars, they look good, but actually they are just bad cars. As a buyer, I don't want to buy those lemons. Okay, or、oh, in Chinese, it's just a delay. So, buyers will only be willing to pay a price for a used car that is around average. Okay, if I pay a high price for a used car and that used car turns out to be a lemon, I will feel I get some loss. Okay. The only way that I can、um, avoid that kind of loss is to pay a fewer amount of money. So my price will be only be、um, appropriate or be fair for a a run average used car. Okay. So that means if I am an owner and I have a bad used car, I can be happy because I can sell my car at a higher price, higher than the car that is deserved. But if I am having a good car, then selling that car to the used car market is going to hurt myself. So that means if I am a bad car, bad car owner, 
I will sell my car. If I am a good car owner, my car is not going to go to the used car market. So days after days, we will only see bad cars on the market. And then the expected quality and the average quality will both become lower and lower. <coughs> so that means information asymmetry, again, will introduce inefficiency. In this case, on the market, there will only be bad cars. And that's why people get hurt. Okay, Buyers buy only bad cars. Owners who have good cars cannot get money. So that's inefficient. In a screening game, we know that information asymmetry protects the agent but hurts the principal. In signaling game, in some sense we can say the problem is even worse because information asymmetry is going to hurt both the buyer and the seller. Okay? And eventually, how may we solve this problem? Well, thanks to information technology, thanks to internet, thanks to all kinds of problems uh, studied in this framework. We now have a lot of platforms that suggest reasonable prices for used cars. We now have those are car workshop that can be used to investigate those used cars. Okay, that helps um, buyers to reveal the hidden quality of used cars. And that's going to help eliminate or at least alleviate information asymmetry to enhance efficiency. Another example studied by Professor Spence is about the market of labors. When a labor or when a college graduate uh, who just graduated from college, <coughs> when he must go to the job market to find a job, as a potential, uh, sorry, as an as a agent, as a person, as a graduate, he knows her ability or productivity, but the company or the potential employee uh, employers do not. Okay, so that means the quality is the worker's hidden information, and in that case, it's just like employers are buying employees. Employees are used cars, okay? So firms will only be willing to pay for around average workers. So even if you are very strong, if the company cannot see it, you will only get average paid. So low productivity workers are happy. High productivity workers are sad. And eventually, high productivity workers will leave the market. Or for example, go abroad. And then the wages in this market will keep decreasing and decreasing. And eventually no one is happy. Because um, firms, for example firms, they will only get low productivity workers. And eventually that's information asymmetry <coughs> causing uh, inefficiency. So what should we do? Uh, in this case, it's kind of hard for a way to uh, for us to have an uh, online platform so that we can enter some attributes to get a suggested wage now, that may be too hard so professor spence he argued that this is why people get high education uh, i mean higher education okay or study in good schools so we know uh, it's somehow it's not very costly for a high productivity person to get a higher degree. In some sense, it's easier. Okay, suppose they are all graduate students. Uh, sorry, undergraduate students. Then for those guys who can do a better job in uh, learning or in studying, they will try to get a higher degree, so that they can. Um, somehow distinguish or differentiate themselves with other guys. Okay? However, for low, pro pro low productivity workers, it's more costly for them to do that. So by getting a higher degree, for example a master degree, or by entering a better school, high productivity people may differentiate themselves. In that case, getting a higher degree is going to send a signal to those companies that I am a good student.
and I can be a good worker. Okay, and through a rigorous analysis, this particular motivation or this particular way to send signal can really happen and be effective, even if education itself is not enhancing productivity at all. Okay, so typically we think going to a good university is to make ourselves、uh, better or be more ab more able to do the job. Okay, but、uh, in this argument, schools does not need to be a place that can train students. Schools only need to provide some kind of certificates. To students that can really get a degree from them, okay. The only reason that I I I should say um. Even if schools cannot provide better training. As long as it can provide the signaling effect, students will still be willing to attend good schools. Students will be still be willing to get higher degrees, okay. So. All is because of information asymmetry. It's not because of ability training at all. Okay, so based on that two previous example, now we get a very basic idea about signaling. Signaling, the the action of signaling is for the principal to send a message to the agent to signal the hidden information. I know something that you don't know. And I hope you can know it. Then I should try to do something, to, to convince you that I,、uh, that information is something, that you care about. Okay, and that sending a signal, really requires an action. For example, getting a degree. Okay, for signaling to be effective, there is one basic principle that need to happen. Is that different types of principles? They must take different actions. Okay, so for example,、um, high productivity workers and low productivity workers, they must do something different. Otherwise, the agent has no way to differentiate the principles. Okay, so it must be somewhat too costly for one of the types to take that certain action. Okay, we will see examples. So, some other examples are here.、Uh, suppose I am a manufacturer. I may want to offer a warranty policy to signal my product reliability, right? If I am producing reliable product, then my warranty policy will not be very expensive to myself. But if my product, if my competitor's product is bad. It will be too costly for him to offer a warranty. So in that case, it's possible that in equilibrium, only good company offers warranty, and then consumers can tell the probability、uh, can tell the reliability based on having a warranty or not.、And、that's one example. A firm may choose a high price to signal the product quality. <coughs> oh, that's another possibility, or I may offer a full refund policy if you come to my restaurant and feel the restaurant the food is not satisfying you. Okay, these are all some examples in business that、uh, companies can use to signal their product quality. Of course, you may also think, um, let's say for example for warranty, it is also possible that those bad companies pretend to be good companies by offering a warranty. Right, or bad companies still charge high prices. That's obviously possible. So we need to use、uh, models. We need to do analysis to see whether that may happen or under what condition that may happen and the signaling fails. Okay, that's something to do later on. Okay, so how may we model in the analysis a signaling game? We're going to have a principal and an agent. The principal has a hidden type, because the agent cannot observe the type. The agent will have some prior belief on the principal's type. 
A belief is just a probability measurement. I cannot see your type. So with some probability, I think it is low. With some probability, I think it is high. Something like that. And then the principal will choose to do something that is observable to send a signal. The agent, based on that signal, will then forms a posterior belief on that type. By observing that action, my belief may change through Bayesian updating. Okay, and then based on that posterior belief, the agent will respond to the principal. For example, buy it or not buy it, something like that, and then the principal can take the action to alter the agent's belief. Okay, that's the key in the principal-agent problem. So, as an example, we mentioned a firm makes and sells a product to consumers. Reliability is unknown. Consumers may have some prior estimation about the reliability. The firm chooses to offer a warranty or not. Based on that, the consumer updates the belief and finally decides whether to buy it or not buy it. Later, we will first introduce you the idea about Bayesian updating, and then we will use one example to tell you how this particular thing can be modeled, and how we say it is an equilibrium. And for a given game, how to find an equilibrium and some interpretations. Thank you.